A warning, Mayo people may find this item offensive as it contains a couple of cheap digs. Time for a bit of shiver me timbers and army hearties, but in a Mayo accent which I'm not going to attempt. While the men from the Western County are probably best known for losing All-Ireland Finals, the women are made of marinated granite, most notably the celebrated Grace O'Malley, more commonly known as Grania Whale. The history books will tell you that O'Malley was a product of the Elizabethan era. The truth is that Queen Elizabeth I and her entire court were products of the Grania Whaleian age. Grace O'Malley, born in 1530, was from a seafaring family based around Clue Bay. To be honest, the expression seafaring is really a bit of a euphemism for piracy. The O'Malley's were the precursors of a phenomenon also familiar in the county immediately to the west of Mayo, New York and the Mafia. Both offered protection to honest businessmen, upon payment of a dollop of turnover, of course. The Cosa Nostra sent men with broken noses whose names ended in vowels to collect their dues. The alternative being a long sleep with the fishes. Ironically, that was the O'Malley's preferred payment method. They claimed the right to levy all vessels fishing off their coastline. Whether this was tax collecting or piracy is a moot point. To this day, there are those who still see little distinction between the two pursuits anyway. In her youth, Grace was a bit of a tomboy. She earned her famous nickname Grony Whale by cutting off her hair when her father refused to take her on an expedition to Spain on the spurious pretext that her long tresses might catch in the ship's rigging. <laughs> Pisho. Grony Whale means bald grace in Irish. You'd wonder was it worth the backhanded sniggers. She was married twice and was rumoured to have had many liaisons outside the marital bed. In the Grony Whaleian era, such rumours were a means of disparaging a woman or enhancing the status of a man. Of course, this would never happen today. Her second marriage to Richard Burke was an unqualified lack of success. He was known as Rishthard on Earing, Iron Richard, not because he was like untempered steel, but because he always insisted on wearing a coat of mail around the castle in case someone tried to stab him. Grace herself would probably have been a candidate for the job. They were married under the Breton law, which, as it happened, allowed a wife to divorce her husband. And as it happened, that appears to have been exactly what happened. Grace, installed in Burke's ancestral pile, Rockfleet Castle, ended the marriage by the simple device of telling her husband, Richard Burke, I dismiss you. Mind you, she kept the castle. When the English kidnapped her sons, rather than kowtow to perfidious Albion, she raised the Jolly Roger circumvented the land bridge through Hollyhead and sailed directly to London, demanding to meet good Queen Bess herself. Their encounter was a memorable occasion, with Grace doffing her tricorn hat and cutlass and dolling up with the 16th century equivalent of creations by John Russia and Philip Tracy. Mind you, she also sported a concealed dagger, just in case, which must have ruined the line of the dress. The Virgin Queen was highly impressed by the Pirate Queen, and peace reigned between the two monarchs for as long as it took until both of them fell out again. As, astonishingly, Elizabeth spoke no Irish and Grace hadn't a word of English, the two communicated in Latin. In Mayo, to this day, they speak little else. Phrases like Victor Ludorum, for example, though obviously not if you're talking about the Sam Maguire. <laughs>